about it. Is this concept of rent to rent. Now the rent to rent strategy is very interesting because it doesn't require a lot of capital. In fact, it actually requires probably the least amount of capital than any of the other rental strategies. The concept is really simple. Um, the idea is that you rent from a landlord at a certain price, let's call it 10,000 Rand, and then you sublet the house to a couple of other tenants and what you sublet it for is higher than what you're paying the current landlord. So it's essentially like you're renting this property that you can see on the screen but you're only taking one room and you're renting out the other five rooms and you essentially cover your rent that way. So it's, 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 you can kind of think of it like a subletting strategy. It's completely legal as long as the landlord is aware of it and there's signed agreements in place. Um, the only difficult thing about this deal is it's hard to find. It's hard to execute. So I found an example of a potential one in Westville, um, Durban. So here we can see that this is in an area called Westville, which is pretty close to the University of KZN. Um, it's six bedrooms, three bathrooms, it's 1,200 square meters, it's massive. So if we just look here, you know, you've got a, a beautiful massive kitchen, um, you know, you've got lots of space. All of these rooms, you can obviously create a shared room, like a TV room for your students, but you could also, you know, change this up and put two extra students in here. Um, you know, so if you're clever with how you creatively maneuver this property, you could probably fit more than six students in here. You could probably you know, I would say you could probably put about 12 students in here. I mean, there's even a bar area, which I'm sure the students would love. Uh, you know, there's one of the bedrooms, nice and clean. Be uh, what you could do here, because this bedroom looks quite large, is you could put a little um, panel. Uh, what do they call it? Not permanent uh, drywall. Is it drywalling? I think so. You can put a drywall in there and partition this one bed into two small rooms. You know, and you could put two students in this one bed one bedroom you know that's quite possible um, you could convert this room which seems to be an office I would imagine you could probably put another partitioning in here and put two or three students in there uh, this office space can be refined into student accommodation again so I'm seeing lots of potential here for multiple students it seems like a wide open spaces this is the kind of opportunity where a rent to rent would work really well now, when you're analyzing a rent-to-rent, -rent, it's always a bit difficult, okay? So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to work out what we would be subletting it for. So I see six rooms that could easily cater for 12 students. So if I go 12 times 3,250, which is the rate at which NASFAS um, gives out student accommodation or pays for student accommodation, you could probably make about 39,000 Rand in terms of rental from your tenants. But you're only paying 16 to the landlord. So if we say 39,000 minus 16,000, that means that our cash flow will be 23,000 Rand minus additional expenses. Now, what does that mean? Well, all of these expenses, like your rates and taxes, your levies, your water, your electricity, your insurance, all of that will be paid for by you as part of the rent to rent agreement. So let's say that the levy, uh, the rates and taxes are 1,500. You also need to pay for the water and electricity of all 12 students. So if they all spending, let's say 3, 000, 300 Rand per month, uh, times that by 12, you've got 3,600, so you minus that. You also need to pay for the maintenance. You need to pay for any vacancies. You need to pay for the management, all of those things. So let's say another, I don't know, 5,000 Rand goes towards that. Um, you, you'll need to pay for insurance, another thousand rand on that. Um, I think you get the point, right? So what you need to do is start with what can I sublet it for, minus what I'm renting it for, minus all of the costs associated to that, and I'm left with what my potential cash flow could be. So what we're seeing here is that, you know, assuming my numbers are correct, and I kind of did just guess them, so please don't quote me on it, but we could probably walk away with about a 12,000 rand cash flow on this property just because we were able to cleverly maneuver a property of six bedrooms into 12 stu student accommodation units. Does that make sense? This is a very, very powerful strategy. Um, if, if we wanted to work out the return on investment, so let's just remember 12,000 as our cash flow, 
The strategy of rent to rent usually requires six months, uh, three months deposit. So if we say 16,000 times three, that's what we're gonna have to pay the landlord as a deposit to be able to rent from them. Plus, we're gonna have to pay for the renovations to repurpose the property into a student accommodation. I would say, based on what I'm seeing there, there's quite a lot of work, lots of partitioning, you know, repurposing the property to fit a student accommodation vibe. You're probably looking at about 200,000. So, although I did say in the beginning that rent to rent doesn't really require a lot of capital, it depends how much work you need to put in in order to repurpose the property to be fit for your subletting strategy. Because I'm targeting students and because I, I you know, students need beds, they need furniture, they need space, etc it's going to be quite a costly thing. So if we say 12,000, which is our cash flow, times that by 12, actually, sorry, I'm going to say 12,000, I'm going to times it by 10, because remember, students don't always rent for the full 12 months. So I'm rather going to work on a 10-month assumption. Divided by 250,000 Rand is our capital contribution, times 100 means our return on investment will be 48% which basically means that within a year, well, within two years, we pay back our original 250,000 and the rest is pure profit. So guys, that's an example, a very sexy example and a fun example of a rent to rent, where you rent from a landlord, you sublet other tenants and you live off the difference. Are you tired of having more month at the end of your money? It's time to venture into property investing. And although it may seem scary, don't worry. We've created tons of resources to help you get started. From tools that help you analyze deals to online training courses to one-on-one -on -one specialized coaching. Click the link in the comments below and get started today.